okay, I just wanted to do this video real quick. I've been wanting to do this for a while now, so I have a little bit of free time, just a little bit. <laughs> so I'm going to um, talk about these peculiar individuals right now. So let me just share my screen and pull up. Pull up this uh, article right here. So some of you might already be familiar with this story. Some of my viewers may have never heard of these two, but they are, they're best known for being the directors of the Matrix film. Let me just pull this up. I guess that's fine. All right, so let me just read this real quick. This is from rebelcircus.com. The Wachowski brothers are now sisters. How they changed their lives. So, like, this story, like, just threw me for a loop because at first it didn't throw me for a loop as, um, as much as it did once I found out that they aren't twins. Because at first I was like, oh, they're twins. Then I could understand why they both transi transitioned. But when I learned that, no, they're not twins. They're actually born two years apart. I was like, what the hell? I was like, what the hell is going on here? Especially because they're prominent in Hollywood. So let me just continue reading. Then I'm going to get into their chart. The Wachowski siblings, both writers, directors, and producers, first caught the attention of the world in 1999 with their groundbreaking sci-fi hit, The Matrix. At the time, the Wonder Kinds were referred to in the press as the Wachowski brothers. Since then, a lot has changed. Andy and Larry Wachowski are now Lily and Lana Wachowski, and they don't care who knows it. So here they are as men. Wait a minute, which one is who? I think that's Lana and that's Lily, which is Andrew and Lawrence. So Lawrence Transit, well, I'll just continue reading. Early beginnings, Andy and Larry Wachowski were born in 1960 Chicago, the sons of a businessman and nurse. They were created from an early age, businessman and nurse, that's Capricorn and Cancer. They were created from an early age, and schoolmates remember them playing Dungeons and Dragons. Oh, back when I was a kid, growing up in the 80s, and you know, being in the church, I, was, I heard that Dungeons and Dragons was of the devil, and you could get possessed playing that. Maybe there was some truth to it, dealing with these dudes. Now, the siblings say they were most influenced by directors like Alfred Hitchcock, Stanley Kubrick, and George Lucas. The siblings got their start in filmmaking in the early 90s with the thriller Bound. I've never seen that movie, I don't think. Groundbreakers, the siblings first found massive success with the 1999 release of The Matrix. William Gibson reviewed the film as arguably the ultimate cyberpunk artifact. It was influenced by everything from religions like Buddhism and Christianity to philosopher Baudrillard simulation theory. Audiences may have been slightly mystified by the highbrow philosophy of the film. Okay, we don't need to get into all this. Wait a minute, what's this about? Black leather and androgynous style. Oh, that's just the Matrix. All right, life in the gender Matrix. While the siblings' futuristic leather clad, no male, no female style may have found awesome reception in the audiences who love the Matrix, the world wasn't always so open to their aesthetic. Childhood was predictably rough. Lana spoke at the Human Rights Gala in 2012 about her difficult childhood in 1970 Chicago as Larry, a boy who did not fit in. She said that a Catholic school nun once physically abused her because she refused to join the other boys in line. Things got so bad that Lana once jumped in front of a subway train and was only stopped by the presence of a stranger watching her on a platform. Now that deals with Andrews, Mercury, being conjoined to the fixed star fascies, which can deal with accidents, especially like stuff like crazy, like freak accidents and stuff like that. It could cause somebody to be prone to violence, even, you know, self-destructive behavior. So Mercury represents Andrew's siblings. So this was about Larry Lawrence jumping in front of the subway train, trying to kill himself. Let me just turn to the next page. Lana told the New Yorker that she first had an inkling that she was a trans woman while still a child back at the Catholic school. 
In fact, the identity crisis may have been what pushed her into film. I have a formative, formative memory of walking through the girls' line and hesitating, knowing that my clothes didn't match. But as I continue on, I felt, okay, blah, 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 because that's not really the point of the discussion. Really, it's about the transition of both brothers, Andrew, after, I'm trying to get to their transition point, just to show you that one transition before the others. So that's Lana right there, Larry, a.k.a. Lana, and this is before Andrew transitioned. So let me just, okay, let me just get to their charts because I'm not trying to make this all long, but y'all get the idea. So let me just pull up their chart. I got, a, got it in a dual will format. So to the left, you see Larry, Lawrence, Lana Wachowski. Let me get my little spotlight tool. And he was born June 21st, 1965. That makes him a Gemini. He has a stellium in Gemini. You know, Gemini deals with siblings. So that brings his brother into view. And Andrew was born December 29th, 1967. That 29 can produce issues with your image, issues with gender. You know, I always talk about the 29. It can produce a variety of challenges internal as well as external conflict. Oftentimes there's an issue with being your own individual in some cases. So let's get down to it. So again, that Gemini theme is strong in Lawrence's, AKA Lana's chart. So it's like, okay, he already, he also has some strong transgender aspects to like being it in Cancer, trying Neptune in Scorpio. Also, his moon in conjunction with Chiron in Pisces. And it's opposed to Pluto. I don't know how tight that is because I don't know what time he was born, but I'm thinking that, you know, it's probably, you know, close enough to really make an impact. So that he already has the hookup with the trans in the chart. So does Andrew. But then you got to take into account that Andrew's south node is in Libra. And that could deal with someone who is not being themselves, someone who is not being their own individual. They're following others or they're following one person in particular. They're basically, their whole reason for being is someone else. So he's coming from a past life of being very relationship oriented, where he really lacked uh, identification, like on a you know an individual level, individuation. The interesting thing is, Andrew's self know is in trying to Lawrence's Lana's son, son in Gemini siblings again. So this is showing that boom, he's still living through his self know by following his brother. Also, what's so crazy about this too, Lana has Mercury at the 11th degree of Cancer. That 11th degree reinforces that Cancer energy, but that 11th degree is conflict, deals with a lot of conflict, especially like internal conflict. It could deal with where you can't be your own individual or where someone is trying to interfere with what you're trying to do. And that's his brother because Mercury represents sibling. So, if you look at Andrew's chart, Andrew has his Mercury right on his son. So that just shows that his whole image is basically part and parcel his brother. Like he is very close to his brother, too close to his brother. Mercury, his Mercury is opposing his Mercury. So it's like with Andrew's Mercury being in Capricorn, opposing Lawrence's Mercury, that's like, okay, I feel inadequate without my brother. But I have a feeling that Lawrence, Lana really doesn't want Andrew Lilly to be all up her ass like that. His ass, whatever they are. First of all, I'm not really buying the transgender thing, especially with Andrew. Like, 
I feel like this, let me, now the whole transgender thing, it's very controversial, but I feel like there are some true blue transgender individuals, and then you got some that, you know, they're going through a crisis in their life, or, you know, they just want to be, you know, very expressive of their unique nature, and they want to reinvent themselves, and, or there could be some, you know, mental issues going on, or whatever like that, these two strike me as the type, because also you got to take into account um, the mental issues that Lawrence was already bringing to the table. And not all transgender individuals are suicidal and are trying to throw themselves in front of the train. So don't get it twisted. It's not like, you know, you got transgender individuals who are like all of them are mentally unstable and unhealthy. That's not true at all. These two, though, strike me as the type of mentally unstable off their rocker and you know they're part of hollywood so a lot of people in hollywood are just off their rocker crazy mentally unstable you know bound to do things that are just shocking and odd and all that stuff now maybe lawrence's feelings about being a female or wanting to be a female were really valid but again this andrew paul lily you can even see the difference in the way that the two look. Um, Lawrence, Lana definitely has a more feminine look, whereas Andrew, Lily, is definitely much more masculine, or like they say in the uh, gay community, butch. So it's like, but it shows that with Mercury, his Mercury being conjoined to Cap, uh, his son in Capricorn, seventh degree, that could be someone that, you know, they naturally feel a sense of inadequacy especially when you take into account that his mercury and sun are in square with saturn saturn and aries he like he can't be his own individual he feels inadequate also looks like he suffers from severe depression and all types of stuff he might you know have a fear of being left alone matter of fact he does because he got venus conjoined to atlantis and venus is in scorpio and Lance's is an asteroid that can represent separation and anxiety. Like you're afraid the world's going to fall apart if people leave you, or you're afraid that there's, you know, pending disaster if, you know, things aren't the way that they always are. So he has this really strong attachment to his brother. And I have a feeling Lawrence gets sick of it because of that Mercury opposition Mercury. Also, there was something else I wanted to put out too. Oh, yeah. So Lawrence, Mercury is running parallel to Apollo. And that can deal with a brother that is so stubborn, that is so set upon doing things over and over again, even if it's not working out to his benefit, like very hard headed. So that could deal with him constantly trying to emulate. And that Mercury and Cancer could deal with a brother that mirrors or emulates him. So he's constantly trying to emulate him. And because it's Capricorn energy that Andrew's dealing with. Andrew needs to be relevant, but he doesn't feel relevant on his own. And as you can see, his Aries North node, which means that he's supposed to be his own individual in this lifetime, is all tagged up by other planets. So he got it bad, but it looks like the both of them are just dealing with some mental health issues. Now, I don't know what time they were born, so I don't know how their house placements are set up but especially dealing with andrew he is the one that is basically in a symbiotic relationship with his brother you know they work together as directors as writers and they even um have did the, well andrew has emulated his brother to the point of becoming transgender himself lawrence's neptune and scorpio is in square to andrew's mars and aquarius so that shows that when Lawrence transitioned, that triggered Andrew to do the same, to reinvent himself, to change up himself, because Andrew lacks individuality and lacks the identity of his own. So he's apt to basically uh, follow the crowd or follow a friend. And in this case, the friend is his brother. Like they have that whole friends to the end relationship. But again, I have a feeling that Lawrence begins sick of Andrew's shit. There was another thing that points to, oh yeah, so Andrew's Uranus 
is at the 29th degree of Virgo and it's squaring Lawrence's son. So this is like Lawrence not being able to be his own and, you know, be his own individual because of his brother. So when Andrew does things to change himself, that might trigger Lawrence to change up things about himself. And like this, there's this constant back and forth cat and mouse game. One's trying to, you know, outdo the other, or maybe not outdo, but it's almost like Lana is constantly, or Lawrence is constantly trying to get away from Andrew being a hanger on. It's just really twisted. But that's all I'm going to, um, get into like I'm not like I said I'm not going to get too deep into it but I just thought that was really interesting that you have two brothers they're not twins born two years apart and both have become transgender but like I said I just explained why it's like Andrew Paul Lily can't exist on his own and he is in a symbiotic relationship with his brother Lawrence Lana and there was something in his chart too that points to him lacking boundaries oh yeah um that whole seventh degree hookup Mercury and the sun at the seventh degree him lacking boundaries with his brother that opposing his Mercury so yeah just crazy crazy story but yeah this world is getting crazier by the moment so should we even be surprised anymore what we discover, what we find out, what we hear in the news? So let me know what you think in the comments section. This is some crazy shit. Oh, but I forgot to talk about this, too, before I go. So that North Node conjoined to Jupiter in Gemini points to basically Lawrence having a brother who will idolize him and who will be a sycophant, who will copy his style, who will basically look up to him who almost makes him like his god so it's like lawrence lana is andrew lily's god which is really twisted oh another thing is um other things that i see in their chart when i put there too like uh lawrence's pluto is something where their pluto's i'm trying to think what is it Oh, it's Andrew's Pluto is on Lawrence's Mars. It makes sense because they're born pretty, it's very close to uh, Lawrence's Mars, four degrees away, less than. Now, of course, that's going to be in effect because the two of them are within age. But I wouldn't be surprised if there was some incest going on when they were growing up. Because, um, yeah, let me just stop there. I'm just saying. Their lives are crazy enough. I wouldn't put it past them. So let me know what you think in the comment section. And if you would like a reading, you could go to my website at rabina.com. And I will be back with some more videos. Peace and many blessings.